it is really easy to write a console command in Unreal. So inside of the header how slash i console manager, there are various types. And one of those types is the f auto console command with world and arcs. And so there's various versions of this f auto console command, but effectively it is a class that you create a variable of and it creates a console command for you. So the variant with, with world and arcs is actually going to give us some string arguments and a world pointer in the callback. And so the way you set these up is you create a variable of this type. And so we're naming it command editor player controllers. And then you give it a name to type in. So I'm going to type command dot iterate player controllers. And you give it a helpful description. So demo a console command. And the last argument to the constructor of the struct is a delegate that will execute when you type in the console command. And so in this case, we've got this f console command with world arg delegate, which matches the type of console command we're using. And I'm going to create a lambda from it. And so I'm defining lambda here, no captures. In the arguments of the lambda, we have some arguments that are of the type tray of string, and that's what you type after the command iterate player controllers. And then lastly, we have a world pointer, which can be very useful for setting up things like timers, or in this case, iterating a player controller. So if we look, the first thing we do is we ask the world for a player controller iterator, and we store the player controller iterator in the for loop initializer. We make sure it's valid, and then we keep increment it. So this is going to loop over all the player controllers that the world knows about. From the iterator, we just grab a player controller and then I log the player controller. So we're going to log the function, which is the lambda, and then found a player controller and we'll print the name that shows up from the get name safe function that makes sure it is not null pointer. And then we do reference that to get it into the person s. Additionally, after this, we have a that array of args. And so we loop over that array of args and we log the arg. So this is what you could do to create custom logic. So here you could have an if statement and do different things based off the values passed into the console command. So let's test that real quick. All right, so now if I add pi, I can type command dot iterate player controllers. And so tap auto complete that. And if I drop a valid breakpoint here, we can execute the console command. And now I didn't type any arguments, so the args array is empty. However, we still have a valid word world pointer, and so let's see if we have any player controllers, which we should. It looks like our iterator returned a player controller. We use the iterator to get a, a valid pointer to that player controller, and then we log the name of that player controller. If we go check out the log in debugger output LLB, we can see that we found a player controller, and its name is player controller underscore zero. And since we didn't have any args, we're not going to print anything there. Let's try actually adding some arguments there. So I'll say custom arg1 and custom arg2 that and I'll tell it to run to here and so now we're going to loop over the args if we inspect the array you can see that there are both arguments are there and it's going to just print them for demonstration purposes but you could convert those to integers or, or whatnot and make your console command very custom and now this is perhaps the easiest way to write a console command you just define the command and you make the lambda all as part of the command However, there is a problem with this, and live coding, it seems, will not always update this lambda. So if you wanted to iterate on this and say we did something else here, well, when we live code, it will not update with the restart the entire editor. And that's not good for iteration. And so the workaround I have is instead of using the delegate that is creating a lambda, it's just create a delegate to a standalone function, and that seems to work with live coding. And so here we create two more console commands just to demonstrate the differences. We have one console command here and another console command here. This console command is using the create lambda like we just did. And so inside of the logging, it's just going to print a zero here. The other one, however, is also a console command with world and arcs. Create a variable, give it a name. But instead of doing the create lambda, we're doing the create static. And we'll pass it this standalone function. And this standalone function has the appropriate arguments for this type of console command, which are the array of string args and the word pointer. And inside of the function, we will basically do the same print, but with zeros here, just like up here. And what we can do is we can increment both of these numbers and see which of these work in live coding. All right, let me just fix 
these names so that they're consistent. So we have command live code update failures lambda and command live code update failures func. All right, with a fresh editor started, we will do command dot live code update failure lambda. Run that, hop over, we see it printed zero. And then we'll do the other one, which uses a func function. Hop over there and we'll see another update zero. So you can see the difference. Here's the function and here's the lambda with its convoluted address name. Anyways, let's update those values and see how live coding can fail. So I'm going to set that to one, set that to one, and then I'm going to tell it to live code. All right, the live coding is complete. So let's run those commands again. I'm going to run the first command with the lambda. And if we hop over here, we see that the lambda executed and it still has a zero as an argument, despite us successfully live coding with one. Let's try the other one. Funk, run that. And we can see here that the one that did the standalone function updated to a one. So we could repeat the experiment once. So now we've live coded it with two. And if I run the function or the lambda and then the function right over here, we can see that the lambda is still printing zero and the standalone function is printing two. And so it's better for an iteration purposes to make a standalone function instead of doing the convenient create lambda. In most other cases of live coding, you don't have these issues with lambda delegates because you know you do it on big and play or on construct or something, and it just reruns and actually correctly binds to the updated lambda. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and until next time.